All right, so if we know that the electron is confined to an atom, what's its delta x going to be? Yeah. Now, is it going to be 0.1 nanometers, or is it going to be twice 0.1 nanometers, or half 0.1 nanometers? 0.1 nanometers. Okay, I tried to bully you out of the right answer, but you stuck to your guts. Very good. Um, because it's like the atom is like this. And remember that the diameter is this total distance. Uh, but I could have made this harder. I could have said that we had an atomic radius of 0.05 nanometers. If the atomic radius is 0.05 nanometers, you wouldn't plug in 0.05 for delta x. You would still plug in twice that. So it's important to know the interpretation. But you were right. This should be 0.1 nanometers. And uh, what are we going to plug in for h bar? Um, h over 2 pi. And what's h? over 2 pi. All right, now would be a good time to figure out delta p. Let's just go ahead and figure out delta p. So you avoided uh, a very common trap, and you fell into another trap. So the trap that you avoided is you, you seem to be one of the very few people who know how to divide by 2 pi in the calculator, mm -hmm. which is you know that you have to put this in parentheses. All right, so um, that's good. If you have more than one thing on the top or the bottom of a fraction, you've got to put that into parentheses. So you put this into parentheses here. So you've got the right number for this side. However, um, we want to be working in standard units here. Do we really? Well, I'm just thinking that if Maybe. you just kept it within the yeah. nanometers. Because I. Well, yeah, but actually remember that ultimately we want our answer to be energy. And energy is going to be in joules. Right. Um, and that's a standard unit. So um, it seems like we, have, we should start getting into standard units here. Yeah, so we will be better off if we get into uh, standard units here. Okay, uh, but yeah, so maybe you weren't falling for the trap so much as postponing something. So you could just postpone that. All right, but let's actually do this conversion now. So is it 10 to 10 to the negative 9? That's right, nano means 10 to the negative 9. Yeah, you can't just use your previous answer because that was from this. Oh, I thought it was, I was going straight from there. Yeah. That's right. Uh, maybe we'll just approximate that as 1.1 times 10 to the negative 24. Okay, <coughs> that's what we got, 1.1 times 10 to the negative uh, 24, and units would be kilograms, meters per second. All right, so you did this division, remembering to put the parentheses around the 2 pi, and then you divided this into 0 0.1 nanometers, but point, this was really 0.1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. Okay, so a lot of unit conversions here. And then... Now the next step then is to figure out what are the extreme momenta that we're fluctuating between. So let's say... that this represents the uncertainty in the momentum. 
Well, how wide would this interval be? Right, this distance here is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 24. And we can interpret that as saying we don't know whether we're going with p momenta in one direction or p momentum in the other direction. So how can we figure out what this endpoint here would be? So what does it mean that we're uncertain about the momentum? Well, for example, we might not know, is the momentum between negative 1 and positive 1? Or is it between negative 10 and positive 10? Or is it between negative 20 and positive 20? That's how we're going to describe the uncertainty of the momentum. We have to find some endpoints that, uh, that constrain the momentum over here. Well, if the total uncertainty is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 24, how can we figure out how big these endpoints should be? Yeah, that's right. After all, to take a simpler case. Let's say that we weren't sure whether the momentum was positive 6 or negative 6. What would delta P be? 12. So this is the example we saw before, that the endpoints are actually half of the uncertainty, because you can go 6 above 0 or 6 below 0. Yeah, let's call that 5.3 times 10 to the negative 25th. And then the left hand would be negative 5.3 times 10 to the 25th, negative 25th. And these would all be kilograms, meters per second. So if, we, if this is our uncertainty about the momentum, that really means that the momentum is somewhere between these two regions over here. The momentum is somewhere between these two regions. And the mistake would be to think that it's between 1.1 times 10 to the negative 24 and negative 1.1 times 10 to the negative 24. It's actually, these are half of that. So that's the important thing to watch out for. So the point is, it's possible that we can be moving at 5.3 times 10 to the negative 25th kilograms meters per second to the right. Or maybe we're moving at 5.3 times 10 to the negative 25th kilograms meters per second to the left. So that gives us our total uncertainty about the momentum. All right, and now we're going to take this P and plug it in here. That's the P we plug in here. And remember, the question was asking us for the energy. So then do we divide it by the mass of an electron? That's right. So we'll have to look that up in your inside front cover. Kilograms. That's actually a number you need a lot in the homework because you're going to be doing a lot of problems about electrons. The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. As a memory aid, it's got the number is 911 in it. I don't know how to memorize the negative 31. All right, so uh, that's our uh, mass of the electron. So do we use delta P or do we use? We use the P. It's the P because that is actually what the extreme momentum could be. Remember that the momentum is not going to be as big as 1.1 times 10 to the negative 24. The biggest the momentum could be here is 5.3. Let's call that 580,000.
millimeters per second. Okay, so to review, we took this number from momentum, 5.3 times 10 to the negative 25th, and now we're jumping into our flow chart here. So we can use this equation. If we divide the momentum by the mass, we find the velocity. Good.